Hi, I'm Kyle from Spec, and welcome to our first ever broadcast of Spec TV here on specproducts.com. Now, today for our first episode, we thought it'd be fun to have my good friend and colleague Brian Hanacek. He's Spec Products Director of Design and of What's Next. Today, he's going to be talking to us a little bit about his inspiration behind our flagship product, the Candy Shell. Walk us through a little bit of the Candy Shell line and take your questions, some of which you sent earlier, and you can always ask us now by using hashtag AskSpec on Twitter. Brian, how are you? Doing well, how are you? I'm doing great. I'm super excited to try this out today and to <clears throat> hear your story. I've heard bits and pieces throughout my last year here, and, yeah. and uh, I'm excited to know really how you came up with this great design. We all use it. We think it's a great product, but how did you come up with it? Oh, it's, it's a little bit of a long story. <clears throat> it started uh, a few years ago. We started doing research on it around the iPod Touch 1, uh, the first generation iPod Touch. Um, so we're going back a ways now. We're going back four, a ways. Five years. Yeah, uh, almost four years. Okay. <clears throat> yeah. And so at the time we were researching and looking at some of the best cases out there and they fell into t two camps. There were the soft rubber cases that stretch onto your um, onto your iPhone or iPod Touch that were really easy to take on and off and offered impact protection. And then there were the two parts. Yeah, when you pulled those out of your pocket, they would reverse your pocket out. It was horrible. <laughs> yeah. Right? Yes. We, we all know what that's like. You pull it out and it was... Turn your pocket inside. Turn your pocket inside out. We don't want that. So that was the silicone kind. Yes, the okay. silicone kind. And then there's the plastic two-piece cases that... Or there are sometimes more than two pieces, but they those offered... <clears throat> Uh, scratch mainly scratch protection and came out of your pocket inside and out, but you always felt like you're installing a case onto your onto your phone or iPod Touch, like a, an erector set for your phone. Exactly, it was cumbersome and took a while. And then oftentimes when people put it on, they just leave it on and not take the case off anymore because oh, it was too hard <clears throat> to take off. Yep, exactly. So what we did is we wanted to take the best of both worlds, and that's where we came up with Candy Shell. Uh, it's a plastic exterior. Uh, it's got these little cuts in the corners that allow the case to sort of flex uh, similar to the soft case. Uh, and then it's got the rubber on the inside for impact protection. And the rubber pokes up past the bezel so that uh, when you have your iPhone in it, and your iPhone, if you happen to drop it and it falls face down, uh, the rubber actually protects the screen from hitting the surface. Something you don't get out of the, the snap-on cases because typically they're flush with the sides, right? Exactly. And uh, oftentimes they'll notch out little areas around the headphones and the top and the bottom so that you don't get impact protection around the full bezel of the phone. Because one area where you can hit is here and here. So this really offers the best of all the worlds. You, you married two you know, really popular cases yep. into one case, which has become our flagship product. and one that people haven't been able to replicate. Now, why do you think that is? I mean, there was a, some, some really cool designs that you came up with to, to make this thing amazing. Well, in, in particular with the 3G version, uh, when we first started to uh, uh, sketch it up, we went to a number of uh, different uh, people to help us sort of engineer it. And uh, four different people told us that it couldn't be done. And well, I, I know you well enough to know that that's a challenge, right? If it can't yeah. be done, you're going to try to make it happen. If it can't be done, I know that we're on the right track with something. Uh, because the opening for the iPhone is actually smaller than in the inside, uh, it's in molding, it's called an undercut. And we have that both in the plastic and the rubber. So, so let, me, let me slow you down so people really understand <laughs> what this is. So basically, because the phone sits on the inside. Yeah but the rubber comes over the top. Over the bezel, so yes. So the, the inside is wider than the opening. Exactly. Is, is that, that's what you're saying? Yes, so when you're, when you're molding it, the piece that goes on the inside actually has to be larger than this opening. Which seems like an impossible task, which is why you heard four times that it couldn't be done. Yes, okay. and that has to be done to both the plastic and then again to the rubber. So, you know, we, we won't talk about trade secrets here, but, but basically you figured out how to do it yep. before anybody else in the industry. Yes. But uh, that's pretty cool. Yeah. Now I feel pretty happy sitting next to you. <laughs> so, so why the perforations? Why in, in the back and, and you know, why some of these little embellishments, you know, the, the larger camera hole, um, you know, everything else that's, that's on this? What, what are those design features that make this unique? Well, the little holes on the back, those are, uh, from a design uh, standpoint, that's largely a pattern, but it offers a little bit of weight savings because the rubber material is actually heavier than the plastic material. Okay. Uh, the large camera hole opening, when they introduced the iPhone 4, 
<clears throat> the flash is actually under the glass. So the flash has a really wide uh, light blast. So by making this uh, opening this large, we ensure that you aren't going to get any color reflection or any shadowing in your, in your photos. I think some people have experienced that in the past where yeah. they, they line up their, a great shot. You and I both have young children, both six-month-old boys. Yep. We go to take a picture, not with our case on, of course, but you know, and you have a little problem. So, so yeah. this takes that away completely. Yes, completely. And to my understanding, um, we're one of the only people, only manufacturers that actually complies with Apple's. Or uh, one of the few. One of the few, okay. Yeah. And so we have this on all of our iPhone 4S yes. and 4 cases to exactly. make sure that there's no flash vignetting. Yes. That's, uh, that's pretty cool. Uh, the rubber button covers. Talk rubber. a little bit about those. It's the same rubber as the inside, or is it a different rubber? It's the same rubber as the inside. Once we get the rubber in there, the rubber's flexible, so it allows us to do a few certain things. So it allows us to cover all the buttons, so you have some extra protection to keep dust and things from getting in there. Uh, and then uh, we leverage that so rubber into some of the other these products. So folks can see it. <clears throat> Uh, we leverage using the rubber on some of the other products in uh, in different capacities. Okay. And it offers the distinct uh, color breaks that we have in all of our product lines where we have the two tones, <clears throat> this one with the white and the red, and then a few other ones. So I've said this before. This is our flagship product. We know it. We, we love the candy shell. Folks love the candy shell. I saw a bumper sticker the other day. I, I heart candy shell. Uh, Palo Alto, California. I don't know who made that to you. I'm not sure. Um, in your mind, why do you think this is incredibly popular? Is it the simplicity? Is it the protection? Is it the design, the colors? And we could ask our viewers, but, um, but in your mind, what do you think makes uh, it so popular? I think it's just a really good balance of the function and not adding too much bulk to the iPhone. I think that the percentage of protection that you're offering this uh, competes with some of the most protective cases on the market. And then off and does that all within a really slim, not ov visually overwhelming case. Mm -hmm. It's not too bulky. <clears throat> it's not you too can bulky. Still slide in and out of your your pocket with ease. Exactly, and it doesn't beautiful have a lot of, of colors. Yes, beautiful array of colors, and doesn't have a lot of visual noise. Is this your phone here? Yes, that is. With your with your child on it. Yes. This is why I like it, and and if you don't mind me showing showing you right now, um, because because of this. Yep. That's uh, you can bring that over here, Tim, if you want to show folks. That's why we love the candy shell. But some questions that came in earlier this week from some of our consumers, why don't you guys make a barely there case? Um, I imagine what they mean is, is something that's almost kind of like insignificant as far as adding, adding any bulk or anything to the case. Um, but how, how come we don't do that? Uh, well, just because at a, at a fundamental level, we want our cases to be protective. We think pr protection is table stakes in this game and you need to ha offer a certain level of protection and you know <clears throat> protecting the bezel and uh, having the full wrap around is something that's really important to us and if you look at our you know our full product line all of our products are you know pr protect the front bezel and offer a certain amount of protection and we think that that's really important because once you start getting uh, and removing these layers of protection, then it really becomes just a sort of visual accessory. And at that point, it, you know, it, it feels a little empty and not as rewarding uh, to us and also, I believe, to the end user because, you know, we've heard that, you know, people buy barely their cases, they put them on, they drop their phone, they thought that they were buying a certain amount of protection and personalization, and then it failed on the basic level of protection. And, you know, we just don't want that experience with our end users. You know, and, and you mentioned, you know, a, a case that you just kind of slip on and so forth. And, and um, you know, we've all been to the mall. We've seen these kiosks where yeah. you can buy a $5 case. Yeah. Uh, what's, the, what's the difference between a $5 case and, and a candy shell, which is thirty four ninety five? I mean, what, why wouldn't I just go to the kiosk and get one of these things? Well, there's a good chance that it might not even fit. You might buy it and it might look like it fits when it snaps on, but then all of a sudden when you get home, you realize that it starts impeding some of the performance. Uh, some of the buttons, uh, it may 
even cover up some of the buttons. You may start taking pictures at certain lighting and realize that uh, not only is are you getting some haloing or vignetting, but even the, if it's color, the color is actually bouncing back into your photo and you're getting color wash out. So there, and <clears throat> sometimes you might go and even buy one of those and snap it on, or you might even order it online and snap it on and it doesn't even fit. You know, we take a great deal of pride in uh, how all of our cases fit the products. You know, we have 3D scanners in house. We scan all the products that we're making cases for. Everything that we build is built to a uh, 0.1 millimeter tolerance and how close that's everything, ama that's amazing. everything fits. So uh, it's, you know, it's really important that the relationship between our case and your phone is just uh, it's really tight and snug, and it it feels like you're not you feel comfortable with that relationship. Yeah, because it's an extension of you, just like your phone is. Yeah, and you know the case is in between you and the phone, so if things are loose and flopping around, or if they're too tight and popping on and off, it doesn't make you feel comfortable that your phone's really protected or <clears throat> not going to fall out of your case. Well, there you go. Jonathan, I hope that answers your question. Um, let's move on to Brett's question. This is a great one. We hear this all the time. How far in advance do you start designing cases for new products? And he mentions the iPad, the, the next generation iPad, um, when formal specs aren't available. It sounds like he might know a little bit about our industry that, or just that Apple or any other device manufacturer doesn't release yeah. the, the data ahead of time. So. How early do we start designing cases well, for this? Well, we're always designing. So right now, for example, we're designing a bunch of new cases around the iPhone 4 form factor. And we take it all the way up to tooling, and we test it out. And uh, any new features or functions, you know, we, we go through some testing to make sure that it's going to perform correctly and have everything essentially baked until a new form factor comes out and then when the new form factor and comes out... And by form out, factor you mean what? The the shape? The size? The yeah, if if a new iPhone uh, were to come out then essentially everything's ready and then all we have to do is scan the new form factor and then just change it to fit the new form factor but all the features and functions have already been tested. Ah, so you know what new products are coming out already. So you know what we're going to come out with. So, so do you want to... No. No? I don't okay. know. Alright. So Nobody you, knows. No one knows. No, I know. I mean our products. For, uh, you don't oh, need... you mean the cases? Yeah, you want to tell me? Maybe whisper? Uh, I'll show you later. <laughs> okay, show me after the break. <laughs> All right. All right, well, that was Brett's question. We've got a few more here before we'll go to the live questions at Ask Spec using that hashtag. Um, let's see here. Here's a, here's a good one. Uh, well, I could say, what do you have in the works? But, um, but I, I don't know if this Jonathan, there's a different, this is a Jeff, different Jonathan. Um, We've got, we've got a few new cases in the works. We've, we're constantly experimenting with new different functions and watching the way that people use their cases. So, you know, <clears throat> there's, we're noticing more and more ways that people are using it. And the fact that the iPhone's just constantly getting more and more consumers, different people are using it in different ways. So, so we can expect more of these kind of really cool functional derivations of candy oh, exactly. shell or some new things? Not only of Candy Shell, but of some of our other product lines. Okay. So we're continuously exciting. expanding not only Candy Shell, but the Pixel Skin HDs, the FabFit line, and everything else. Cool. Well, I guess we'll have to stay tuned and, and see. Oh, yeah. Um, check out our retailers. Check out specproducts.com. Um, okay, I'm going to ask you one last question before we go to the live questions. How do I take off a Candy Shell view? It's so form-fitting um, that some folks... Um, have have a little trouble pulling it off. So where's yeah. the view? Here's the view. Let's pop your own phone in there and let's show some folks. Yeah. So on on all the candy shells, uh, I use the same approach. The card and the view tend to be a little bit more difficult just because this back center section is a little bit more rigid uh, than it is on the. And rest it's and of for this, shells. it's reinforced um, for the kickstand and, and it's reinforced here because of the because of the cards. Okay. Yeah. So what you want to do is you want to start down here at the bottom and just flex this back, this bottom corner off. And you just start here and pop that back, and then you pop this back. And then once you have the side free, then you just... You just pull out the phone. Pull out the phone. Let's, let's talk a little bit about products we don't have here. Mm -hmm. Obviously, we talked a little bit um, about the iPod Touch, mm -hmm. and we're talking about the iPhone 4 and 4S here. But, but we're not just about Apple products. Oh, no. Um, what are other some... Um, some devices that we're, we're making products for, you know, the Kindle Fire comes to mind, uh, the Samsung 
um, smartphones, HTC smartphones. How do we decide and how do you guys decide back in product development which one you're going to make a case for and which one you're not? Because uh, we get a lot of folks saying, how come you only make Apple stuff? And it's not, it's not well, we only do that, but definitely we do a lot of our, um, our products geared in that direction. So how do we make the decision to, to pick one up or to not pick one up and to make a case for it? Uh, some of it's buzz. If there's a product that's about to come out that's getting a lot of buzz, some of it's our channel partners. If our pa partners are really excited about a particular phone that's going to come out, uh, we've, we're constantly making candy shell and fitted in some of our other product lines for more and more Android, uh, more and more Android and other uh, products. And someday in a perfect world, we'd have cases for every phone available. But it's just uh, one of those things that uh, spec is constantly growing, and mm -hmm. as we grow, we're going to continue to make it for more and more product. And uh, you know, we start with some of the more popular products, and but then we continue out beyond that, beyond that ring into uh, hopefully someday make cases for everything. Well, it's interesting, right? <clears throat> because I mean, you have an iPhone. Um, I have an iPhone, uh, but a lot of folks, even people here at Spec, um, have a lot of HTC devices yes. and Samsung devices, and um, the new Note just came out, mm -hmm. um, where you can get our candy shell at at t stores right now for the Galaxy Note uh, in two different colors. But um, one, one thing that people don't realize is that something like maybe the HTC Evo comes mm -hmm. in actually in different form factors and shapes and designs, yeah. so from the 4G to the 3D to the original. And then a lot of these things also are, have very short lifespans because yeah. the, the turnover is a lot quicker than maybe somebody who buys an iPhone 4 or 4S and, and keeps it for a year. Yeah. Does that come into play or? <clears throat> yes, the, if a phone has a really short life cycle, it makes it very difficult to make a product for because you know there's a certain fixed time that it takes to actually make a mold for a product, not to mention the time it takes to actually get the device, you know, scan it, design for it, and then build a mold and then manufacture the products. There's a fixed time to make to do all that. So if the you know, if a phone's going to only be out for three months before it gets replaced, it makes mm -hmm. it really difficult to even get imagine. cases yeah. out there for everybody to have one. Even if we were right to the <clears> gun <throat> when it was announced, it's difficult to kind of keep that excitement up from the, from the consumers. A exactly. And they're, they're switching their phones quite a bit, the, the smartphone <clears throat> users. Oh, yeah. And then even, even within that, uh, the exact same phone in different countries and uh, different, uh, different carriers have subtle differences that we have to account for and scan for and build in accommodations to ac to account for these subtle variations between phones. I see raised screen bezel as a feature on a lot of spec products. Mm -hmm. Why? Why well, like I mentioned earlier, you know, <clears throat> there's always the there's always the chance that when you drop your iPhone it's going to fall face first. Mm -hmm. uh, if it falls on the concrete, there's a chance that the glass could break. The other cool advantage about this is a lot of people set their phones face down on their desk. Uh, you know, it's going to keep it from getting scratched. Uh, we have had stories where people have left their phone on their cars. Mm -hmm. We don't recommend doing that. <laughs> They've driven off and their phone has stayed. So the fact that there's a little rubber bezel uh, around the end keeps it from sliding around. So it actually helps a little bit. Let's hold <clears> that up a little bit here. So it's this, this piece right here. Yeah. We can actually see it, Brandon. I don't know how close you can get in on that here. Let me turn a little bit there. So yeah. it's that that the glass is set down yep. further, and then the rubber is up a little bit higher. Yeah. What is your team's design process like? Is it heavily based on research or customer feedback, or is it a lot of brainstorming, etc.? And uh, this is Mark asking this question. Oh, it's actually a combination of all three. You know, you can't really design just by doing one of those three. Uh, there's a lot of internal ideation that goes on. Uh, we do mine through all of our customer feedback. In fact, we do even uh, seed a lot of uh, people with our products and ask for feedback. We have events here at our retail store where, uh, where we have parties that we invite friends to spec, show them some of our new products and get direct feedback, sometimes as scathing as it may be. It <laughs> uh, helps us make better product though. It does make it help us make better product. Uh, and then also, what was the first thing that he pointed out? Let's see, uh, research, customer yeah, feedback, and, and a lot of brainstorming. So that, yeah, research, and then the customer feedback, and then just tons and tons of brainstorming. 
I'm going to assume that the candy shell is your favorite product that we make. Mm -hmm. I'm just assuming that. I might be wrong, but take candy shell off the table. What's your favorite product? Oh, man. That's a tough question. Uh, I Next to candy shell, I think fab shell is a really great product. Uh, it's a plastic chassis on the inside, and then it's uh, over-molded in rubber so that you have the same rubber bezel, uh, rubber in the corner, so it allows it to flex on and off. But then what we've done is we've actually gone back uh, and applied fabric to it so that uh, it offers more of a, uh, a fashion type feel and uh, sort of ties in a little bit better with your fashion accessories. It makes it softer and more familiar when it comes to uh, fashion accessories. That's great. And um, I see some of these have the Burton logo on them. So uh, I imagine this is part of the, the Fab Shell Burton line, which yep. you can, uh, some of these are new colors you'll see on, um, on specproducts.com. Um, Brian, thank you so much. Kyle, thanks for having me. You know, it's a pleasure because knowing you and knowing how, how passionate you are about the products that we make, it just, it's so awesome to know that somebody who makes these things is a real person uh, with a family at home who, who, uh, who has all of those images on their phone and they just want to protect it when they go around places. And you're doing the same thing. You're helping all of us yeah. have that same experience. And, uh, and I, I appreciate that. So. So thanks, and I know everyone else appreciates it. Thank you. All right, so thanks, everyone, and um, we'll talk to you next time on Spec TV.